trusted news source. This is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight, we're going to take you out to a special competition near Waverly involving man's best friend. Plus, a jury reaches a verdict in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. We'll have the latest on that. But first, after two people were killed along O Street this weekend, questions tonight on safety. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. It's no secret there have been complaints about loud street noise, burnouts, and donuts off of O Street. We spoke to uh, both the Lincoln Police Department as well as those who enjoy fixing up classic cars to get their reaction. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez joins us with what they had to say. Ariana? Yeah, Lincoln Police told me they have programs focused on combating the road noise on O Street, as well as keeping an eye out for DWIs to help reduce the number of traffic crashes. I also spoke with car enthusiasts about what they say is the true meaning of cruising. The owner of Bomber's Garage explained that working on cars and showing them off is a sentimental activity for many, and it's not about driving dangerously. And driving fast certainly doesn't get you any girls. I can tell you that firsthand, so it doesn't make you look very cool. Uh, and and your, your buddies don't think you're that cool either. So you're much cooler just uh, driving slow, cruising nice, and you know, showing off your hard work. That's all. He shared that what happened over the weekend was tragic, and he wished it didn't happen, but hopes that moving forward, those who want to race or do donuts will go to a track and stay off the streets. All right, Ariane, I know you'll have much more on this also coming up on our newscast at 6 o'clock. Appreciate it. The COVID-19 risk dial here in Lancaster County has not changed for a third straight week now. It remains in the mid-yellow range, which means there is a moderate risk of the virus spreading. The positivity rate has increased from 12 to 16 percent, but cases have dropped slightly to 417 from 422 the week before. There were 53 cases yesterday and 23 hospitalizations here locally and also one more COVID death in May. We have more information on upcoming vaccination clinics on our website, KLKNTV.com. And speaking of COVID, several airlines want to end certain testing requirements for some international flyers. They want the Biden administration to stop requiring it for vaccinated travelers who are entering the U.S. The push came at a meeting with some White House officials. They and the U.S. Travel Association, they say the requirement is harming the economy and doesn't match the current threat from COVID-19. Meanwhile, the CDC is fighting for the authority to continue requiring masks on flights. A Florida federal court struck down the mask mandate in April, saying the CDC never had the authority to issue that mandate. Now they're doubling down, saying they definitely have the power to require masks federally, and they're asking an appeals court to overturn the decision. The Community Health Endowment has awarded over $1 million to help organizations recover from the pandemic. It's part of a special fund focused on health equity and human connection. Nearly $1.5 million were awarded during a Community Health Endowment meeting recently. The awarded grants, uh, which will go to about 10 different projects, will start in one month on July 1st. In national news now, a jury has reached a verdict in the high-profile defamation case involving Johnny Depp and ex-wife Amber Heard. The jury has sided with Johnny Depp, awarding him $10 million in damages. Heard was awarded $2 million. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. After three days of deliberations, the jury in the Amber Heard-Johnny Depp defamation case returning a verdict. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Heard acted with actual malice? Answer, yes. Do you find that Ms. Heard has proven by clear and convincing evidence that the statement by Mr. Waldman was made with actual malice? Answer, yes. Amber Heard inside the courtroom as the judge read the verdict. Johnny Depp watching from the United Kingdom, where for two nights he's played a concert in London. A source close to Depp saying due to previously scheduled work commitments made before the trial, Mr. Depp will not be physically present. The nearly six-week-long court battle stemmed from a Washington Post op-ed by Amber Heard, who described herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. Johnny Depp wasn't named in the article, but his legal team maintained that it damaged his career and future potential earnings. For weeks, jurors heard testimony from both sides claiming to be victims of abuse. I have spoken up for 
what I've been carrying on my back reluctantly for six years. Amber Heard countersued for $100 million after Deb's team called her claims a hoax. I am harassed, humiliated, threatened every single day. This trial reeling in an audience of millions around the world and dozens who have shown up at this Virginia courthouse day after day. With the verdict now in, it marks the official ending of this real life Hollywood drama. And though a verdict is in, this case is also being tried in the court of public opinion with questions now about how this will impact both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's careers and reputations. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now to get a check of our weather. It was a nice and cool morning, but Malcolm, this afternoon we finally saw the sun. Yeah, a little gloomy this morning, but that is no longer the case. The sun has finally uh, reared its head, and we are seeing lots of sunshine across southeast Nebraska. Here's a live look over our southeast community college camera, and there are more clouds off towards the east. That is a look at what was, and this is a look at what's to come. There's a lot less cloud cover looking off towards the uh, westerly direction. Uh, this is a live look over our Alla Communications camera, so a beautiful picture out of there looking towards the capital. Satellite and radar imagery over the last six hours shows some scattered showers, and honestly, actually, probably more on the isolated side uh, over the last six hours, not producing a whole heck of a lot of rainfall. If you were lucky enough to see these, you probably only picked up a trace of an inch, maybe a hundredth of an inch if you were very lucky. As far as rainfall totals go, uh, Fall City was one of those lucky locations. They've picked up five hundredths of an inch, but all of the other airport locations haven't picked up anything officially. Uh, Kearney did record a trace of an inch this morning. So temperatures right now, 73 degrees in Lincoln, 71 in Beatrice, uh, 63 degrees in in Fall City, that's some of that rain cooled air spreading out. 67 in Kearney, 71 in Grand Island. Uh, for the rest of this evening, mostly clear skies by 6 o'clock, but turning completely clear as you go into the overnight hours and temperatures will drop like a rock. As a result of that, 61 degrees by 10 o'clock and even cooler for the overnight hours. However, we are going to warm up starting tomorrow. We'll have the details coming up in just a few. All right. Thank you very much, Malcolm. The National Hunting Dog Trials are in Waverly this week. Nearly 100 people from across the country are in town to showcase their dog's abilities. They've held this national trial near Waverly for the past five years. Take a look. The National Shoot to Retrieve Association is an organization dedicated to bird hunting, specifically quail. For the competition, there are two large fields they use, and there are two hunters on each field competing against each other for 30 minutes in what's called a brace. It's like a bracket in other competitions. The dogs are judged on how they perform in the field. Uh, they can't, once they point, they cannot move. The handler has to walk up, flush the bird. Then the handler can't move. The dog has to come, go get the bird and retrieve back to the handler within three feet. The winner of that brace is the one who has the most points at the end of 30 minutes. The organization hopes to bring in more younger people as the sport continues to grow. We would like to share with young people that, and get them off of the cell phone and get them active in walking and training bird dogs. We don't want to lose the art of training a good bird dog. One of the most well-known bird dog breeds is German short-haired pointers. Competitors say they love working with their dogs and seeing all of the hard work training them pay off. It's very rewarding to come off that field and uh, after 30 minutes and have found birds, have your dog look good doing it and perform uh, the, way, the way they do in practice. Now the trials continue through Saturday at the Rock Creek Field Trials Association near Waverly. To find out more about Rock Creek, visit their Facebook page. All right, uh, some sad news now tonight from the Henry Dorley, Dorley Zoo in Omaha. It announced today the death of Dottie, a 22-year-old giraffe. She was born in 1999 and has been at the zoo her entire life. She is the mother to three calves. Now the average lifespan of a female giraffe is around 20 years old. According to the zoo, Dottie suffered a fall yesterday and was unable to get up. Due to the fall and other chronic health issues, the, de the decision was made to humanely euthanize Dottie. And staying with animals now, some of us picked up boredom during quarantine, but one Central Nebraska family, well, they picked up cattle. The Witties and the Schultes are proving cattle offer much more than helping out on the farm. Here's the story. Mm. That's magnolia. Roger asked if we wanted to get some mini cows in the highlands and 
<laughs> we decided, I guess, to do it. Yeah. And after buying one cow for their farm, they didn't stop there. In fact, they have a whole lot. Nebraska Outlanders, the Whitties and Schultes collect many Scottish Highland cattle, but not for the reason you think. Cuteness factor, and they're a lot more gentle. And curious. Not to mention their personality, which both families say each cattle sure have a lot of. Yeah, there's definitely, definitely, different, definitely different personalities for the cows. <laughs> like Fergus, who's got brawn, brains, and hair. He's, Who is our, our main mascot here. <coughs> yeah. He is spoiled he, the most. He's even got a feature on the company's website. Nebraska Outlanders was started to beat the boredom during those quarantine days, but now the family says the hobby has become enjoyable and a way of keeping their families together. It's kind of a dream to have the kids back here on the farm with me, and I've got a son that farms and a daughter-in-law, and they raise um, Galloway, Belted Galloway. Collecting Highland cattle for fun isn't for everyone, but both families say it's pretty normal. People think we're crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> Looks like fun. That story coming out of the uh, Kearney area for you tonight. Uh, coming up, the Biden administration trying to even the battlefield in Russia's bloody war against Ukraine. We'll tell you what the president plans to send overseas to help Ukrainian forces. We'll be right back. President Biden has now agreed to send advanced mobile artillery rocket systems to Ukraine as part of a new $700 million U.S. aid package. It comes as Russian forces continue to make some gains in their war against Ukraine, which is now in its fourth month. ABC's Faith Abube has more on the promise Ukraine had to make to the U.S. before President Biden approved the new weapons delivery. 
Tonight, the Biden administration trying to even the battlefield in Russia's bloody war against Ukraine. President Biden confirming in a New York Times op-ed that the U.S. will send a new round of advanced weapon systems to help Ukrainian forces fight back against Russian troops. The $700 million aid package includes sophisticated mid-range artillery rocket systems that can hit targets just under 50 miles away. Now you can put that rocket within a 20 to 30 foot uh, circle. And so that precision was going to give the Ukrainians the ability to target things very precisely. Russia unhappy with that news, firing back, telling local news agency Interfax that the U.S. is purposefully and meticulously adding fuel to the fire by arming Ukraine with this mid-range missile system. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov reportedly adding that the U.S. is pursuing the course towards fighting Russia. But the Biden administration insisting it doesn't want a direct conflict. The president writing, quote, we're not encouraging or enabling Ukraine to strike beyond its borders. The Ukrainians have given us assurances that uh, they will not use these systems against targets on Russian territory. On the front lines, Kremlin troops storming Severodonetsk. As many as 13,000 civilians were reportedly trapped. Russian shelling putting evacuation attempts at risk. Video shared by Russian state media shows the Kremlin soldiers in the city center as part of a larger effort to seize control of the Donbass region. Despite making inroads in eastern Ukraine, some analysts say Russia is not achieving its goals. They're tactical. These are not strategic moves. So uh, it's still quite the stalemate. And as the war rages on, President Biden says despite Russia's dangerous and extremely irresponsible rhetoric, there is currently no indication that it plans to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. But if it does, there will be severe consequences. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. No. Your Storm Alert Team forecast with meteorologist Malcolm Byron. Well, look at this. The sun, the sun decided to join the party. Here's a live look over our Sherman's roofing camera in Beatrice, a mostly sunny view over there. Now, the sunshine peaked out uh, during peak heating, so a lot of temperatures to rise a few degrees into the 70s. 73 degrees, the current air temperature in Lincoln, 71 in Beatrice, uh, 72 in Omaha, 63 in Falls City. That's a cool spot on the map because there's some rain cooled air down there. Uh, 71 in Grand Island, still in the 60s uh, in Aurora, Hastings, and Kearney. Satellite and radar imager of the last Six, six hours shows some scattered shower activity moving from southwest to northeast. Uh, not a lot of shower activity. Remember I said yesterday that it had to overcome some dry air. There was a lot of it today. So if you were lucky enough to see some of these scattered showers, you likely didn't pick up much in terms of accumulation. And all this is now pushed off towards the east. We're looking at mostly sunny skies for the remainder of the evening. Uh, that'll make great viewing conditions for the International Space Station Passover. So look to the west-northwest sky at about 947 this evening. So just before our 10 o'clock show. Uh, it'll be in the sky for about six minutes uh, and it'll disappear in the south southeast sky. So something to look forward to this evening. So for tonight, clear skies, 46 degrees. The combination of clear skies and light winds are going to help us get this cool. This is uh, below average for this time of year for sure is uh, average lows this time of year are almost uh, 10 degrees warmer than this. Now let's pick up storm cast tonight. Uh, here's all that precipitation off to our southeast along with the cloud cover. It's scooting away from us and here are those mostly clear skies going into the overnight hours. Uh, tomorrow morning, waking up to clear skies. I think the only people seeing clouds uh, overnight tonight uh, will likely be out in the northern regions of the state, uh, closer towards the panhandle. Uh, going into tomorrow, we're looking at mainly sunny skies. However, there will be a boundary somewhere over north central Nebraska, and we could see a few clouds and maybe a couple of isolated showers firing along those. I don't think Lincoln will see uh, the showery activity. You may see a few uh, high clouds filtering in uh, from these showers, but uh, those will mainly be off towards the north, out towards Broken Bow, maybe Greeley and Orton. These will be very isolated at that. I think everybody south of I-80 will be completely dry for the day on Thursday. So mostly sunny skies, 80 degrees on Thursday. We are turning warmer. Winds out of the west and southwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Over the next two days, we are turning warmer again. 80 degrees on Thursday, a uh, slightly warmer on Friday. We're looking at mostly sunny skies, and uh, chances are in eastern Nebraska we will be dry. However, off in western Nebraska, we may start to see some thunderstorm activity late in the day on Friday. We are eyeballing a couple of disturbances as we go in towards the weekend. There'll be weak ones at that. Uh, this is a disturbance that was with us today, and that's scooting on out of here. We have no disturbance in the vicinity of us on Thursday. That's why we're keeping things dry. However, on Friday, uh, you, you don't see much. You see these little uh, little colored blobs there. These are very, very, very uh, weak disturbances. 
you see Saturday morning we have to contend with one of these, but this is a very weak one at that. When we have weak disturbances, we don't expect widespread precipitation, just a very isolated or scattered precipitation, and these will really be with us through the weekend and beyond. So you'll see isolated to scattered storm chances pretty much Saturday and beyond, but I think there will be plenty of uh, dry periods on Saturday. It'll come in waves. I think there'll be a morning round and potentially an evening round. We'll cool off temperatures a little bit as a result of that disturbance approaching. So 78 degrees on Saturday and the pattern just looks to remain unsettled uh, going into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, maybe drying off by next Wednesday. But for now, uh, you know, we don't have any 90s there. It's June 1st. That's kind of weird. Right? I, I was just <laughs> going to point that out, Malcolm. You like read my mind. It, it might be the unpopular opinion, but I am thankful there are no 90s in there. Yeah, at least for the time being, we don't have the humidity too, so mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like summer. I have a feeling they're going to get here soon enough, so yeah, right. I bet you're right. In hundreds. All right, mm. thank you, Malcolm. A negative day on Wall Street today. The Dow falling 177 points. NASDAQ also down around 87. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Finally tonight, a research study of what scientists thought were scores of underwater plants turned out to be one big plant. The world's biggest plant, in fact. Here's tonight's Take a Look at This. According to scientists, the world's biggest plant has been found hiding in the waters off Australia's coast. The discovery was made in Western Australia's Shark Bay, nestled between well-known destinations like Monkey Mia and Useless Loop. 
While doing DNA testing on a common underwater ribbon weed called Posidonia australis, samples from two sites over 100 miles apart revealed the vast stretches of underwater weeds were not multiple specimens, but one single plant that had grown to over 77 square miles. That's three times the size of Manhattan. Scientists believe this amazing floral feat was achieved over 4,500 years of singular growth. Over in Chile, a new contender for the world's oldest tree has emerged. Scientists used unorthodox measures to analyze the age of a massive cypress tree known as Gran Abuelo. It is yet to be confirmed, but at an estimated 5,000 plus years old, that would make it older than the current title holder, Methuselah, a roughly 4,500 year old bristlecone pine hidden somewhere in California. Finally, a dramatic rock slide caught on camera in Arizona may not have broken any records, but it was no less impressive to behold. Mila Carter was recording from a boat when the massive slab of rock came crashing down into Lake Powell. They were able to speed away unharmed, and Carter said luckily there was no one around when the shock and rock show went down. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. All right, let's get a final check of your weather with uh, Malcolm and relatively other some chances of uh, some uh, rain, smooth sailing. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, so we're sailing the rest of this evening. Clouds <laughs> on their way out, mostly sunny skies, 72 degrees by 6 o'clock. And then we have clear skies going into the overnight hours, so temperatures will drop very quickly. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, Malcolm. And thank you, King of Segways there. That was perfect. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us tonight. World News is coming up next with David Muir. We'll see you back here with more news, weather, and sports at 6 o'clock. Have a great evening. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. The Jalapeno Popper Frenchie, creamy and crunchy in each delicious bite. Enjoy this bold new taste or the timeless original, Frenchies at Amigos King's Classic.